Cheyenne Rapaho first. Cheyenne Rapaho first, yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, Apache, Kiowa, yeah. Ute, yeah. you know, and, and so, yeah, they're, they're, in fact, they're doing a whole historical thing on the lost language. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very important that we keep that, that language alive. Are you hopeful about it being taught in the, at the, oh, it's at the, uni taught. But at the university level too? I don't know about the university level. And this assimilation process has got to end. Yeah. Can you talk to us a little bit about the history of the, the, the St. Cajun's Parish here? The Spanish well, back in the, in the 1960s, I mean, uh, prior to that, this had been a, a Chicano, Mexicano, Mexican-American community with a thriving barrio. Uh, and what happened is in the 19, I believe the 1970s, I believe eminent domain was used to displace over 200 families under the theory that they wanted to create the higher uh, area education complex. And as a result, folks were displaced with the theory that they, their offspring could come in and they could get education free, but it did displace a community. So you have this influx back and forth, but the reason 1910 is so important is because it was a revolution in Mexico, and people left there to seek safety to find a new life, and they ended up, many of them, here in the Lincoln Park. And what happened to those families that were displaced when the Agrarian campus was, was they built? They were they supposed were... to have been given fair market value for their, for their homes, with the caveat that they could also Access education. They, they walk here to church every every Sunday, and well, actually, my mother-in-law would come here all the time. Yeah, my name is Sherry Coca. Is my maiden name. My married name is Candelaria, and I was married in this church in 1971. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I met my husband, who lived just a few blocks from here on Ninth and Pan Street, this was one between St. Joe's and St. Cayetan were the two churches that they attended regularly. Where was St. Joe's? St. Joe's is on 6th and Galapago. Is it still a it's congregation? It's still there. Now? There's still a congregation. Yeah, though. Yeah. yeah, the family, the kids would yeah, come, the they would quick. participate in all the events in the church. Uh, I wasn't Catholic, but when I got married, my husband's uncle, who was ordained here, married us here in the church. So it was a big bet, and his brother was the altar boy. Really? Yeah, that was 41 years ago. Hey, can you give us a sense of um, the, was the, the language that they used in, in mass was at that time was it Latin? Yes, uh -huh. it was Latin. And, and what did people talk after the you know after the service? What kind of, what kind of language did well, they was use? It, English and Spanish? It or? was a mixture of both. Mostly the elders spoke the Spanish. Mm -hmm. You know, and the younger kids, because we had to attend school, sure. we were we were told that we had to speak English in the schools. So, you know, but when family and community got together, they celebrated with their own language, mm -hmm. you know, and their own food, and you know, people would go to each other's houses and share a meal, and you know, families were all the kids were together. You know, we, it was like just a bunch of kids hanging out, playing yeah. in the street, riding our bikes, and hanging out and coming riding around the church, everybody knew the priest, everybody knew who lived where, and everybody was neighbors. We never locked our doors. The church was always open. The doors were never locked. You, know, you could come into church anytime you wanted to. There was always somebody here to talk to. It was a place to go to get comfort, to get food, to get help, to get whatever you needed. Yeah. Uh -huh.